So variable rate technology basically encompasses oh, pretty much everything um, from what's called pea replacement where we're just changing fertiliser to match last year's yield to uh, changing our chemicals, um, whether that's pre-emergent or post-emergent. Um, nearly any operation in broadacre grade can be varied to some extent and why farmers are using it is both to increase profits but also to reduce risks because we all know we've got variable landscapes, we all can see a yield map when we first get one, there's variation in it and it's just a case of managing that variation whether it's can we even up lift the poor performing areas or do we can we manage reduce our risk on the poor performing areas and hence lift our yields on the good areas but every case is different every case is unique that's why we use variable rate because every soil type's unique so getting into variable rate probably the first step is getting hold of a yield monitor on having a header with a yield monitor it's generally everyone's first exposure to it because it shows how much variation they've got on their own farm with their system uh, going down to the next step it depends on um, where they're up to in their machinery replacement schedule but uh, most new gear is already fitted with variable rate equip, um, ability so whether that's a spreader or a air seeder box or a sprayer um, retrofitting is available but most of my clients I advise that they just worry about it as they progress through their natural machinery replacement cycle just to make sure the gears um, variable rate compatible Probably the easiest thing is to just use your own historic knowledge. Nearly every farmer's got a pretty good understanding of their uh, land, they've driven over it that many times. Um, you can just start mapping out, and I like to term it, the, call it the low hanging fruit. So let's map out our stone heaps, let's map out our sand hills, let's map out the easy stuff that we know, right, that shallow stony ground doesn't perform, we're going to save some inputs on that. This big sand hill, we know it might need some increased seeding rates or some increased phosphorus or increased nitrogen. We know what we can do there. So go the low hanging fruit first, and that's very simple stuff, and none of those things change from year to year. Beyond that, if you haven't, if it's new land or you haven't got a very good handle on it, there's such tools as NDVI mapping from satellites or aerial um, drones um, or your cab mounted sensors. Then there's soil sensors such as EM mapping which I'm doing today. Um, naturally I find EM probably the most effective because it maps the soil and the soil is something that's not changing. You're going to be using, farming to that soil for the next 30 years so if you can nail down your soil types first you've then got a very good basis to build your variable rate plans on. Just the most powerful part of precision ag to me is on-farm trials because we've all got unique systems. We're all at different stages in that system. So a lot of my clients are long-term no-tillers and we're noticing a big lift in fertility, natural fertility in the soil. And this is reducing our uh, benefits from higher rates of fertilizer. So we're getting less of a response to nitrogen, um, but without on-farm trials we wouldn't be able to analyse that and notice that and that leads to savings the next year. So um, yeah I'd encourage every farmer even if they've only got a yield monitor just to do some either have some mist strips or some up and back strips just do trials on your farm because the only way to learn about the variation is to do trials.